Uh, some of you know Alaska just had a little bit of a devaluation, a little bit of a, I don't know, you could say a, a PR blunder in the travel hacking world. They, they took a lot of heat for, for changing their chart without any notice. <music> Everybody, welcome to the Abroaders Travel Podcast, your weekly meetup with thousands of entrepreneurs, hustlers, creators, nomads, ninjas, wanderers, and world changers, all seeking to build the skills and connections to live a life without borders. If you want to learn more about what we do or download our entire podcast archive, check out the website, abroaders.com. Happy Wednesday morning and welcome to another episode of the Abroaders Podcast. This is number 121 and we are releasing the show Wednesday, May 4th. Uh, thank you guys all for being with us. I'm Eric in Salvador, Brazil and uh, checking in with AJ in Barcelona. How's it going, man? Going really well, man. Uh, man, we talk about the weather all the time, but actually it's time it's uh it's the beach time now weather's getting warm enough so it's exciting uh people are people are starting to head to the beach we finally have beach weather so that's been nice uh obviously i i stayed january in budapest february in belgrade not the warmest places in the world so it's nice to be uh be ready to hit the beach so i'm definitely excited to have some weekend beach time and then i don't know if you'll be back in time maybe uh so like eric said he's in brazil but he may be coming back soon uh, the manu chow concert this weekend is actually in a little beach town south of Barcelona, and I'm I'm excited to uh, possibly stay an extra day and check out the beach there. I'm trying to decide how important seeing Manu Chao is. So, first of all, Manu Chao is one of my favorite artists. We've had him on for a couple of international jams, and uh, the thing is, <laughs> this uh, this concert is possibly going to cost me like an extra forty thousand miles to get back in time for. So, this is like a true uh, award decision. I've got an opportunity to fly on Singapore and come back to Barcelona from Sao Paulo and spend about 35,000 miles for two people. So with the Singapore 15% discount, it actually comes down to like 17,500 miles each. And so I really, really should take that Singapore award, but they don't have a flight on Friday. So it's one of those flights that they operate just a few days a week. And so I would miss the show and get, get in on Sunday. So I've got, uh, I've got expert flyer set to monitor some flights from Salvador to Lisbon to Barcelona on Friday and might just end up spending 40,000 miles each so I can get back in time to see the concert. <laughs> yeah, that's the luxury of having a diversified portfolio and a little bit of uh, overflow in your accounts where those are those not be your final, final points and miles. Yep. Before we get into the news and updates, I want to apologize in advance for any background noise. Uh, I'm going to try and keep my side of the call muted for... Uh, for at least whenever AJ's uh, doing the presentation of, at the uh, Regis here in Sao Paulo. All right, now getting into news and updates. It is the beginning of the month, so that means Air France publishes their promo awards. And it's nothing too exciting this time around, but there are some things depending on where you live. There is Boston to Europe in business class for under 50,000 points, which is a nice deal. And one that's really nice is uh, a really big discount is you've got Europe to the Middle East, there's a couple locations, I believe Doha in Qatar, and then uh, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates for only 25,000 points one way. So that's a really nice deal. That's typically 50,000 points, only 25,000 points right now. So that is, those are the only two things that caught my eye. Uh, the, the Europe to the Middle East, like I said, that's a 50% discount. And typically the Air France promo awards are anywhere from a 25% discount to a 50% discount. The 50% ones are obviously the ones to take note of, and that was uh, the main 50% discount I saw, but still, Boston to Europe in biz class for, it was like 48,000 and change. That's a pretty good deal as well. Uh, we will link in the show notes to Flying Blue's promo awards, so you can go to abroaders.com slash etiad, and you can find the link if you are interested. Awesome. Yeah, I think the uh, the promo awards is definitely something you want to check out early during the, the period they release them, typically that are bookable for two months, and uh, they'll release them generally about a month ahead of time. So the period to book, usually you have to book about 30 days in advance. Uh, and they do have limited availability for the promo awards. So once they sell out all the tickets that are slotted to be promo awards, it goes back to normal pricing. So if you see one you like, you definitely want to move forward with that pretty quickly. I know I missed that chance. There was a, a nice Sao Paulo to anywhere in Europe promo award that was bookable a couple of months ago. And I missed the chance and it went back to the normal price before I had a chance to lock it in. Yeah, man. The uh, The next piece of news is Alaska. So 
Uh, some of you know Alaska just had a little bit of a devaluation, a little bit of a, I don't know, you could say a, a PR blunder in the travel hacking world. They, they took a lot of heat for, for changing their chart without any notice, but they do have a promo right now, and they're offering a 50% bonus on buying miles, and this is not a bad deal. The math works out if you max out the, the bonus, so typically that 50% number or whatever the promotion you'll see from, uh, from airlines when you buy miles is when you buy a certain amount. So if you buy the the maximum threshold, I think it's if you buy something like 40,000 plus miles, you get the 50% bonus. And that comes down to 1.97 cents per point, which is not a bad deal. Um, so they did have the devaluation, but there are still some, some nice opportunities. One Mile Out of Time has a nice blog post on what some of those opportunities are. Uh, Emirates business class is still on the table. I believe you cannot book first class with them. That was one of the changes Alaska made, but Emirates business class is better than most you first can still classes. book first class. They're just going to take your arm and play it. However, they do have a really nice rule in place that you can do a stopover on a one way. So depending on how you end up you know, organizing your travel, it might still be worth paying a higher amount uh, with Alaska booking Emirates just because you do get that, that stopover. So it could, could end up being worthwhile. Uh, if you're going to Asia instead of the Middle East, however, Cathay Pacific, they have not changed that chart. And that's arguably one of the best first class products out there. So uh, keep in mind that while Emirates went up like 60%, the Cathay Pacific award price one way in first class stayed right where it is. Uh, so if you're looking at, at Alaska Miles, this could definitely be a good opportunity to purchase Alaska Miles to get your hands on a uh, Cathay Pacific Cathay Pacific ticket yeah, at but a pretty steep discount. If we learned anything, though, from what happened with, with the Emirates rate is you really want to buy these miles with with a redemption in mind unless you're okay yes. with taking a risk. So if you've got a redemption Trust in me. mind, uh, yeah. Uh, so definitely um, have, have something sorted out. Have, have the amount of miles you want in mind. Go after them, book it, and uh, get your deal. Cool. So moving on to one other item that's not actually really news per se, but I thought would be useful to bring up because I, I just kind of recently rediscovered this when I was looking at award availability. I uh, was was trying to figure out my itinerary from Spain to, to Barcelona. And because Iberia is one of the, the One World carriers based in Madrid, uh, it was it was one of the, the great options that I had available to try and get that flight. And what I realized is that if you move your Amex points to Iberia, you actually have different partners available and in some cases different pricing in terms of how much the taxes and fees are going to cost uh, than if you move them to British Airways, even though the currency is, is technically the same. So they're both obvious points and more or less the chart is the same in terms of the distance-based chart and they price them out by segment. So if you're familiar with the British Airways Executive Club, they're very, very similar. Uh, but it turns out that you can actually transfer your points back and forth between Iberia Plus and British Airways Executive Club. Uh, and the only real thing that you need to do to make that happen is both accounts have to be open for at least 90 days. So the bottom line, I think most people probably have a British Airways account, and it's a little bit more rare to have the Iberia account unless you've already done a redemption with them. So the key takeaway here is open up that Iberia account and make sure that when you do that, you take a look at exactly what your executive club account says in terms of your email, your phone number, your address, all those details you want them to match exactly. And once the Iberia account has been open for 90 days, I think you also have to have some sort of activity. So you may want to transfer in a thousand Amex points. Um, but once you've got the account open and you've got some activity, either from Amex or maybe a flight that you credit there, then you're going to be able to transfer points freely between the two programs. Um, and so that, that uh, makes it possible to just move your British Airways Executive Club points over when you want to book on a partner that Iberia has that British Airways doesn't. So, for example, Vueling, which I think is uh, who you ended up flying to Morocco recently, uh, they're a partner of Iberia, but they're not a partner of British Airways. Right, right. That's a, that's a good point. Um, one little piece of news before we jump into the final news points that are kind of they're going to segue us into the core content with this Amex transfer bonus to Etihad is some good news with American Airlines. They've followed suit with Delta where there's no more phone booking fee. So say goodbye to phone booking fees. Uh, no more of that. And uh, thank you to JT. JT and our community pointed that out to us. 
Yeah, definitely exciting. I mean, I would say I've probably only once or twice actually had to pay a uh, phone booking fee with American. Usually you could talk them into not charging it, assuming that something was wrong with the website or you're booking a partner. But I think it's just way easier, you know, to just know that the fees are eliminated. Uh, I certainly appreciate that gesture and, and it'll make it much easier to, to book those American Airlines award tickets. And one final thing I forgot to mention, this is just a little quick piece. This is a listener question from Andreas. And Andreas wants to know, do my Barclays points expire? And outside of a quick Google search, I can tell you that they do not expire as long as you keep your account open. So when you get into the credit card churning game and you have uh, multiple cards open and you're considering closing some cards, that is something to be conscious of before you close cards or accounts uh, to understand what type of points are connected to those and what are the consequences of closing accounts. So in in my quick research, I found that Barclays points per their website do not expire as long as your account is open. Okay, so the last two pieces of news that we have for you guys today are about Amex transfer partners. And specifically, we have two transfer bonuses at 30%. Uh, so as you guys know, Amex transfers to a whole bunch of different frequent flyer programs. When you transfer your Amex points, you take on the rules of that program. You take on, uh, in addition to the rules about whether you can do one ways, open jaws, round trips, stopovers, uh, you also take on the way that they price tickets in terms of fuel surcharges, and you take on their award chart, meaning the amount of miles it takes to get from one destination to the other. So Amex is really cool in the sense that you have some pretty nice arbitrage opportunities opportunities where if you transfer to the right partner, you can potentially get a much better deal in terms of all of those factors that I just mentioned, but in particular, in terms of the price you're going to pay in miles and the amount of taxes and fees you pay out of pocket. So for the rest of the show, we're going to talk through the two current transfer bonuses, uh, which essentially American Express is changing the transfer ratio on a short-term basis so that instead of transferring a thousand miles from Amex and getting a thousand in the recipient program, you now get a thousand three hundred or a thirty percent bonus when you transfer from Amex to Virgin Atlantic and to Etihad. Let's start with the uh, Virgin Atlantic one and kind of run through some of the better opportunities that might be available. Yeah, so one thing to note with Virgin Atlantic's program, you're looking at some higher taxes and fees. But you're also looking at some opportunities to spend very few miles compared to the other programs. An example of this would be New York to London in economy class. I believe it's 12,500 points and $134. So those fees are not bad. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good deal considering it's only, only 12,500 in points. Uh, the fees do get higher in business class, but still 40,000 points from New York to London in business class. And the search I did had taxes and fees at uh, just above $400. So when you consider it some points and 400 bucks for a business class flight, that's still a really, really good deal. Um, if you're flying back, if you, if you try to make that a round trip, you're going to more than double the taxes and fees because from the UK heading back to the US, the taxes and fees are even higher. So you're going to want to book with a different program or or try to book from just a different country in Europe and you'll save a little bit on taxes and fees that way. Uh, Delta, do you know off the top of your head what, what the deal with Delta is? I, I'm under the impression that if you can find uh, a Delta flight that they don't impose the fuel surcharges and the other taxes and fees, but... <laughs> Honestly, well, it's not as bad, but the thing that Delta does is it's cheap from the U.S. to Europe, and it's not cheap from Europe back. The thing with Delta is that if you book a round trip, typically you're going to do better than if you book two one ways in terms of the taxes and fees. Uh, so for whatever reason, at least part of the fuel surcharges that get applied from Europe back to the U.S. get dropped out when you price Delta's award as a round trip. Now, I don't know how that applies to Virgin Atlantic uh, at all in the sense that if you were trying to find a way to get back from Europe to the U.S., just booking a one-way with a totally separate program. I don't think that the, uh, the Delta is going to really help you too much, although it might be better than coming out of London if you're able to fly out of Amsterdam or, or some other place uh, and connect into the U.S., yeah. Well, either way, key takeaway here, that's one of the, the most talked about sweet spots is that New York to London for, for 12.5. And when you do the math on a, on a transfer from American Express, that's even that's less than uh, 12,500 Amex points because you're going to be getting that 30% bonus. 
Yeah, exactly. And with the the business class redemption, forty thousand comes down to just about thirty one thousand, a little bit over thirty thousand. Um, so that's a that's a really nice deal for business class, even with the taxes and fees. I think you're you're certainly going to come out ahead on that. I have to say, I kind of went overboard with uh, the research about Etihad. I had a really good time. Uh, working on this. And so we've got a lot of links in the show notes. The interesting thing about the Etihad program, which also, uh, as I said before, has a 30% transfer bonus, uh, that one ends on 615. So uh, June 15th is the end of the opportunity to transfer miles over. And um, one thing that you want to keep in mind with the Etihad program, every single partner has their own chart. In other words, they have their own pricing. Most of them are distance-based. A couple of them are zone-based. And each partner has their own rules as well, as far as stopovers, open jaws, one-way travel, um, and the award prices and all that. So partners are definitely going to be extra work to book. Before we get into the partners, I wanted to talk about Etihad's own flights because there's some, some really nice values to be had there. But frankly, those have been covered ad nauseum by all the other points blogs. Everybody sort of talked about what you could do, and it's probably because it's really easy to look up and just see what the price is from Abu Dhabi to London, Los Angeles, or New York, and kind of see what the deal is going to be. So we can start with that, and then we're going to jump into some of the more uh, obscure, I guess you could say, partner awards uh, that you have to call to make, but could be a really nice deal uh, if they match uh, your, your travel plans. Okay, so London to Abu Dhabi, we've got 65,964 miles in business class. And from now on, I'm just going to round up to the nearest thousand. Uh, and in first class, that is 88,000 miles. And so when you consider the transfer bonus, that's 51,000 Amex points for that business class flight and 67,000 Amex points for a first class flight, which is a pretty nice deal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're going all the way to Los Angeles, which is a pretty serious flight from Abu Dhabi, it's one of the longer ones in the world. Uh, you're looking at 108,000 miles in business class and 144,000 in first. Uh, but with the transfer bonus, that's 83,000 and 111, respectively. And New York to Abu Dhabi is 88,000 in biz class and 118,000 in first class. And if we're talking how many actual Amex points you need right now, 68,000 in business class, 91,000 in first class, which is a really good deal when you're considering Etihad as a really, really, really nice airline with a really good product. Yeah, absolutely. One I haven't flown personally, and and I'm absolutely really looking forward to having an opportunity to fly. Um, So I think this is worth it. As far as the taxes and fees go, when you book through Etihad, you are going to be exposed to some taxes and fees. They're not horrendous, but uh, be prepared for something in the $200 to $350 range, maybe a little bit higher. So if you're looking for the premium, I mean, if you're you're booking a ticket that costs $10,000 to buy retail, I think that's a pretty reasonable amount of money to pay tax and fees, but just keep that in mind, especially when you're booking on Etihad or booking with some of their partners that do have fuel surcharges as part of the ticket. Um, you want to keep that in mind that it's not going to be quite the same as like booking with American Airlines where you see like a 50 or or $100 on average uh, out-of-pocket cost for the ticket. Okay, so those were Etihad's own flights we just talked about. And their partner flights, the way things work is a little bit funky compared to other programs. So some things to note, you've got to book 14 days in advance. You must book by the phone and the the routing rules, stopover, open jaw, one-way rules, and the award prices, they all vary by partner. So it's almost like each each partner has their own rules and their own chart. Yeah, it was quite fun to dig through these. Uh, One thing to keep in mind, so again, show notes for this episode are at abroaders.com forward slash Etihad, and that's spelled E-T-I. H-A-D. So we've got a bunch of links, including the links to all these partner charts that we're going to talk about, which frankly were kind of hard to find on the website. So uh, hopefully that'll be a useful resource. We're also going to include the phone number list. And I think it probably is going to be smart to try and use Skype and call the phone number in the country where the partner is based. Because 
my reading of this online is that a lot of times the Etihad uh, US desk, they don't know how to book partners. So frankly, this could be kind of an endeavor if you want to book this by phone, but I think it could be well worth it with some of these deals. Um, so we'd love to actually hear back if you guys do go and try and book some of these awards by phone uh, and you have any tips to share with the audience, we'll definitely follow up in a future show and just kind of share what you learned because I've at least read quite a bit that it can be tricky to get these booked. You definitely want to go through and actually look for availability before you call, just so you know you've got the flights and the flight numbers to feed to the agent and say, this is what I'm looking for. And one other resource that's going to be in the show notes is our master cheat sheet. Uh, it's our award booking reference that has where to look for availability because Eddie Ads, a website is not going to show you uh, the search availability for these partner airlines. So you need to look somewhere else. So often there's going to be either the airline's own website will show you or there's other tools like, you know, for example, United can be used to search some of the Star Alliance partners here. Um, so again, show notes at abroaders.com slash Etihad. And uh, we're going to lead it off with All Nippon Airways. This is one that actually isn't a very good value in most of the cases. Um, so we're going to, the only one that I saw that really looked nice was NR T, which is Tokyo uh, to LAX, ANA has a direct flight there, and that one's going to be sixty-three thousand in business class and thirty-seven thousand in economy. Now, I would say that actually using ANA, which is also an Amex transfer partner, might be a better deal here. Uh, so, so consider that as well. Uh, but ANA requires a round trip, and with Etihad, you can book that as a one-way. Uh, so, it could be a win there. And by the way, all the prices that we're going to quote here are not converted to the number of Amex miles based on the transfer bonus. So all the numbers that are listed for all these partner flights are going to be the number of Etihad miles that are normally required. So just keep in mind, you can divide by 1.3 uh, to know what your actual number of Amex points required are going to be if you're able to do this before the transfer bonus expires on the 15th of June. All right, man, that's good stuff. The next one we've got is Brazilian Carrier Goal. And the nice thing about these opportunities is it's often really difficult to find good deals on short domestic flights. So what we've got here, an example would be Sao Paulo to Salvador. So Sao Paulo is in, yeah, you could call it southeastern, eastern Brazil, and Salvador is in northeastern Brazil. Big ass country. It's about 900 miles. And that's only 6,000 points in economy. Heading from Sao Paulo to Rio, that's a 200 mile flight. Only 3,000 points each way. And you can contrast that with Delta at 12,500. So you're, you're cutting that more than in half and you're quartering it for the Sao Paulo to Rio flight. So that's a really nice opportunity. Um, and and goals, it's a reasonable enough airline. So that's, uh, that's nice because man, it's, it's, it's really difficult to do those short flights with points and have it be worthwhile. And another nice thing about this one in particular is flights in Brazil can be pretty expensive. It can be kind of funky. So this is something for people that are going to be traveling within Brazil to take a peek at. Man, I've, I've gotten cleaned up by Delta's pricing. So Delta is also partners with Goal. I put that in there just you know as something for comparison because I've definitely paid that 12,500 miles out of my Delta account to book a, a flight on Goal from Salvador to Sao Paulo. I've done that route a lot of times and uh, it's, it's really bad pricing. I mean, it's still worth it if you're looking at $200 for, for the one-way flight, which is definitely sometimes the case. But to just see that you could do that for 6,000 points uh, with Etihad's program. And with this Amex transfer bonus, it's going to be like 4,500 or something like that. So that is a really awesome deal. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with Goal is that, and by the way, the prices for their long distance stuff, I looked at the prices for like Goal's flights to Miami and to JFK from Rio and Sao Paulo, and it's not that good. Like the, the chart is only really awesome at the very low short flights. But do keep in mind that Goal uh, is in Brazil and flights out of Brazil don't have fuel surcharges. For whatever reason, the Brazilian government got it together and decided to pass a law that outlaws that very deceptive practice. So any flight originating in Brazil is not going to have fuel surcharges one way or another. So that's another nice reason uh, you're probably going to expect to pay like 5 to $10 in taxes and fees when you book uh, through, uh, through Goal with Etihad Miles. Okay, so the next partner up is Air Berlin. Now, Air Berlin is a member of One World, and uh, they didn't have a ton of great opportunities. Uh, but I would say that uh, the the one that 
kind of caught my eye was Berlin to LAX or San Francisco. So this is another mileage uh, distance based chart. So it's in sort of bands. And uh, this flight just like just barely squeaked in under one of the bands. So it's cheaper uh, than if you had been going just a little bit further than Los Angeles or San Francisco. Not that you really can go a little bit further from uh, from Berlin, but the price is 62500 in business class. And I've heard that I haven't experienced it personally, but I've heard that Air Berlin's got a really nice business class. The other thing to be aware of with Air Berlin is they don't have very bad fuel surcharges. So uh, it's one of the programs that's really useful when you're using American miles uh, to go from the US to Europe or vice versa, because unlike British Airways, Air Berlin just doesn't have the same fare structure. So you should expect relatively low fuel surcharges with these flights, and that makes it a pretty attractive redemption, especially with the Amex transfer bonus. Getting back to the theme of domestic flights like we talked about in Brazil, Virgin Australia has some nice opportunities. Australia, another country that geographically it is just massive. And we're looking at 10,000 to 12,000 points one way for award flights in Australia. So that is a, that's a really nice deal. I mean, I could imagine uh, out of pocket you'd probably pay quite a bit flying from, say, Sydney or from, I don't know, Melbourne to, to Western Australia to Perth. So that would be a really nice, nice redemption right there as well. Yeah, I think that that's probably like the the bread and butter of of this chart is is going like across the continent. But even even like the the flights that aren't so far geographically, I would imagine that if you have to book close in, well, keep in mind you can't book less than fourteen days with Etihad's program, so you got to have a little bit of lead time. But I could imagine some of these flights might be more expensive within Australia, like Sydney to Melbourne. You know, there's there's probably some dates that uh, the flights are expensive. So uh, a ten thousand point uh, one way trip is pretty reasonable and definitely something to take a look at if you're going to be in Australia and just want to pop around and visit a few different destinations without having to buy a bunch of flights cash. Okay, so the next one, I uh, did this one in your honor, AJ. I know that you just got back from Morocco and uh, I saw this flight from Casablanca. So Royal Air Maroc is one of the other partners of Etihad. And uh, I was looking at flights from Barcelona, uh, but in fact, most of Western Europe is in within the 1,500 mile distance band of their, their chart. So they've got basically a price for flights under 1,000 and then a price for flights under 1,500. And you can get to Germany, you can get to the UK, you can get to uh, Italy and some of Eastern Europe from Casablanca uh, on in that second price chart, and that's going to be 10,000 miles. Uh, and then if you're looking at, I guess, sort of the the 1,000 mile band is more just Spain and a little bit of France, uh, but that's as low as 6,000 miles. I'm pretty sure those are economy, but I don't know that it would be worth any extra cash to, to upgrade to the uh, Royal Air Maroc business class, uh, but definitely could be valuable, I think. I looked into it. I got an okay deal. It was about 170 for the round trip from Barcelona to Casablanca. Um, Royal Air Maroc is, uh, they've got a kind of an old fleet, but they have upgraded the planes that they route uh, for their long haul flights. So uh, I actually think they define a long haul flight as more than two hours. So if you're if you were further than Barcelona, I think you would have one of the newer cabins with uh, in flight entertainment for economy and a, and a upgraded business class configuration. Um, but that's obviously Morocco's. Uh, that's that's their airline. Um, but I think it's actually not that bad if you're going to be taking a long haul flight. So that'd be something to be curious about looking into because Morocco is a place I would I would like to return to. Yeah, it's uh, well certainly a, a niche airline, but uh, they do have some routes within Africa as well that would be worth considering uh, if you want to check out some other destinations inside of Africa. Uh, definitely, you know, a cool opportunity to use some Etihad points. Uh, and I think would probably be a pretty good savings. Uh, I'm not sure what the taxes and fees would look like on those ones, but certainly worth taking a look. Next up is Asiana. So this is a Seoul-based uh, Star Alliance carrier, uh, and they've got a couple of routes within the U.S. The one that caught my eye is, again, the Los Angeles and San Francisco, just like Air Berlin. Uh, it's under 6,000 miles for a direct flight, flight from Seoul uh, to LAX or SFO. And uh, for that route, uh, the the pricing is going to be 59000 in business class and 35000 in economy. So again, with that discount, you're looking at very, very competitive 
uh, rates. I think, you know, like the other option here is to use United uh, to fly Asiana. And with United, you're going to pay 70 each way in business class. Uh, and with Aeroplan, you're going to pay 75 each way in business class. So this is already a savings, plus you've got the transfer bonus. Uh, so unless, and, and by the way, the fuel sur surcharges are going to come through Aeroplan and most of the other uh, points programs within Star Alliance. So this is definitely a way that you can possibly save some significant points uh, by transferring to Adiat and doing that redemption. Yeah, man. Uh, now moving on to American Airlines. For people that think points and miles is easy, you've got some Amex points, you see a transfer bonus to a Middle Eastern airline, you transfer points there, and then you look up one of their partner airlines award charts. Uh, man, it's, uh, it's quite a bit. Um, what we've got here as far as the opportunities uh, through Etihad to fly on American Airlines is off peak to Europe. So that's October 15th through May 15th, 20,000 points in economy. That's a really, really, really good deal. And the other opportunity that Eric scouted out was off peak to Hawaii. So that's January 12th to March 8th. And then August 22nd to December 15th. And if we're looking at the regular pricing on that, sorry, I didn't even say how much the pricing is. That's uh, 17.5 to 20K, or sorry, that's 17.5 on Etihad, but it's what, 20,000 on Americans chart? Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's not a huge savings, first of all. So this is maybe not, this is starting to get, you know, kind of to the, the niche side. It's helpful is that the, uh, the actual off peak dates are way easier with Etihad than they are with American. So first of all, most people transfer or rather just use American Airlines miles to book on Etihad flights. So this is kind of the opposite of using Etihad miles to book on American flights. And the key thing here, so American also has off-peak rates to Europe. And I think the off-peak price on American's chart is also 20000 but they're really obnoxious timeframes. They're like individual days that you're allowed to book, basically. It's not like October 15th all the way to May 15th. It's like October 15th to November 22nd, then November 28th to December 15th. So it's like all these small little seg sections, which great if it works out, but uh, I found that the off-peak dates were just way more straightforward with Etihad, uh, and either way, you're still saving potentially a little bit yeah, over well, I mean, uh, the off-peak rates with American. Another thing to note, even if it's the exact same pricing, it's still a nice opportunity because you cannot shape shift Amex points into American miles. You also don't get a discount. Okay, so moving on to the next one, I was taking a look at Brussels Airlines. Now, Brussels, like Air Berlin, is another one that is a favorite carrier for those looking to avoid the fuel surcharge. So uh, just generally speaking, the way that Brussels Airlines prices their tickets, they don't include as substantial as a fuel of a fuel surcharge component. And so for a long time, Brussels was kind of the secret way to get to Europe using either ANA or using uh, using Aeroplans programs, because both of those programs pass on fuel surcharges if the airline has them. And so the difference, in other words, between booking a flight with Brussels versus booking with Lufthansa, if you're going to Europe, was really big because Brussels just doesn't have as bad of fuel surcharges. So number one, it's nice in that in that way uh, but Brussels has a direct flight from uh, Belgium to New York City that's the only one for whatever reason that's on the Etihad chart so they also operate flights uh, to I believe Toronto and Washington DC for whatever reason that wasn't on the Etihad chart I don't know if that means that you're not allowed to book it or what the deal is maybe the chart just hasn't hadn't been updated but the New York City route is is 21,000, 22,000 miles in economy and 36,500 in business class. Uh, so that could be a really nice deal. Brussels has nice business class. Um, the other one that jumped out to me was Tel Aviv. I think it's close to 2,000 miles from Brussels, Belgium to Tel Aviv, Israel. And uh, for whatever reason, Israel often gets bumped into the Middle East rather than Europe. Uh, there's some arbitrage opportunities there. But regardless, Tel Aviv is 20,000 in business class and 12,000 in economy from Brussels. So if you're looking to get towards the Middle East or explore Israel, that's another nice opportunity that you can use uh, flying out of Belgium. Moving down south, South African Airlines, we've got Joho, Johannesburg to Guarulhos, Sao Paulo's main airport. And that is a 4,600 mile flight. And in economy class, you're looking at 39,000 points. And in business class, you're looking at 67,000 points. So that's a pretty nice, that's a pretty nice opportunity. And also, I mean, 
Africa is just really difficult and typically really expensive with points. And another yes. thing is like South America also flying out of South America, like South America to Europe is typically really expensive. South America to most places um, other than the United States is expensive. So uh, this is kind of a nice niche redemption opportunity. Uh, do you know, could you, could you actually get to Cape Town? Cause I know the, that's a yeah, pretty, that's pretty, gonna, pretty common gonna route is Sao Paulo to Johannesburg and then finish off in Cape Town. Yeah, so I know for sure, I mean, you can get a lot of flights out of Joho over to Cape Town. Uh, the paid flights are relatively cheap most of the time. I think you can also tack on another award, but I think that uh, that's not going to be legal with Etihad's chart. So you probably do have to book it separately as a paid ticket um, rather than connecting it in there. They don't have any direct flights from Cape Town to anywhere that's interesting. Uh, the big problem with this chart is basically that any flight over 5,000 miles, the price goes way up. So that took like New York is pretty far off. Uh, they actually have a direct flight from Johannesburg to Perth as well. Um, but that one is over 5,000 miles. It's not ridiculous, especially economy. It's, it's, you know, if you're going from Africa to Australia, that's going to be a great option to look at. Um, but the key thing here is that in addition to the fact that mileage prices tend to be pretty rough to Africa and to South America to Brazil, um, but the other thing is almost every other option is going to route you through Europe or at least through the Middle East is going to take you from Johannesburg all the way up to Doha, all the way up to Abu Dhabi or up to a European hub, and then from there down to Sao Paulo. So to be able to get that direct flight uh, I think that's super attractive and a really nice opportunity to use Etihad Miles, book that partner South Africa's direct flight uh, over to Sao Paulo and not have to mess with traveling 10 hours out of your way just to get uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, man. Now, we should note that there are other partners, but Eric, based on your research, you say, I'll tell you, Korean and Arizona, New Zealand in the context of being Etihad's partners are not worth considering. Just uh, pretty much bad Bad charts, bad redemptions, bad routing. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, it's if you're really interested, it's definitely, you know, good to take a look and see if maybe I have uh, have overlooked some stuff. But I looked at Air, Air New Zealand, all the routes available to the United States and up to Asia. Didn't really see anything too attractive. Uh, Korean Airlines, way worse than ASEANA, uh, and they both are based in Seoul, uh, Incheon Airport in South Korea. So, um, and Alitalia was just comically expensive. Uh, there was just nothing that seemed <laughs> worthwhile Man, on that one. They're kind of a bogus airline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know that there's some. I, I remember when I talked to uh, Tiffany Funk from uh, from One Mile at a Time. She actually mentioned that she was a a big fan of Alitalia, and she's got family in Italy, I think, and does that like routes to there. So I know there's some wins. If you want to get the scoop on that, you should definitely check out that episode because she talked about some of her hacks that she uses with Alitalia. But at least through Etihad, it's not going to be worth it in most cases. The other thing to be aware of is there are at least seven or eight other partners that I didn't even mention, didn't even write down in our show notes here. Uh, most of them are pretty small airlines, uh, sort of like the uh, Royal Air Maroc. So uh, we did not give a comprehensive list. Etihad had a surprising number of redemption partners. Etihad's kind of like the Notre Dame of airlines. They're, they're, they're solo and they do whatever the hell they want. Notre Dame, ah, we're not going to join the Big Ten or the ACC. We're just going to be independent and we're going to do it our way, man. Yeah, you got to like that. I mean, the, the programs that cross alliances can be super valuable because generally, if you've got a type of points in one of the airline programs, you're pretty much restricted to all the other airlines in that same alliance. So the independent guys like Alaska and now Etihad, I, this was really not on my radar. So uh, this was a fun fun show to research just because of how many opportunities are out there. I hope you guys are able to take advantage of some of these and please, please let us know, uh, especially how it goes with those call centers. Uh, Cause I've heard ugly, ugly talk on, on the, uh, the web, the interwebs here about how, how it actually works to get these, these flights ticketed. Um, so yeah, share your redemption stories. Let us know if we got anything wrong and uh, we'll share those stories on an upcoming episode. Yeah, once again, show notes are at abroaders.com slash etiad. That is E-T-I-H-A-D as in David. Awesome. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you guys all for being with us. This week's track is from Future Generations, an electronic indie band based out of New York. And the track is Stars.
Hey Broaders, don't be shy. Hop over to the website and join our email list for exclusive travel hacking content. If you like what we're up to, the best way you can support the show is by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Lastly, we would love to hear from you, so send your show feedback to Eric or AJ at abroaders.com. We will see you next week.